Monotremes are some of, if not the world's strangest mammals. And over the next few days, I'm heading out into the bush to search for one of these amazing creatures. It looks like a cross between a hedgehog and an anteater. I'm of course talking about the short-beaked echidna. Let's go. The short-beaked echidna is one of five species of monotremes or egg-laying mammals that exist on Earth today. It's truly widespread here in Australia, found in virtually every single environment, from the snowy mountains down into Australia's desert interior. And unfortunately for me, these guys are some of the most cryptic and hard-to-find animals in the bush. Some people even have them in their backyards and don't even know they're there. So today, I'm going to try track down one of these awesome mammals. So what I'm going to be doing today is following these game trails. And these little paths through the bush act like animal highways. Anything, anything that moves will travel along these because animals like to take the path of least resistance. And this is perfect. It also allows me to cut through the bush quickly and efficiently. It allows me to cover more surface area and uh, increase my chances of finding an echidna. Have a look at this. There's ant nests all around the bases of these trees. There's one down there, some down there. And over here, this is exactly what we're looking for. See here how these nests have all been dug out. This is most likely an echidna. And they feed on uh, termites and ants primarily but they also feed on grubs and other little insects they dig up in the dirt. So what we're looking for today is a digging like this, hopefully a bit fresher, and it will set us on the right track to finding an echidna. So, this is a good sign. Let's keep going. No way. Look at that, there's a koala. The koala will sleep for up to 20 hours a day, and the only times they will move is when they're switching positions in their tree, grasping to reach some eucalyptus leaves, switching tree, or going out to find a mate, or even going to a water source and getting a drink of water. Now they sleep for such long hours because their diet is so low in sugar, so low in energy. And this means to conserve their energy uh, and allow them to actually digest those eucalyptus leaves that they're eating, they need to sleep all day. I just realized I had the entire thing on time lapse. But look, he moved down from that tree and the koala is right down here. Off he goes. Hey, you all right? I don't want to disturb him too much. He's trying to find a new tree. But have a look at him. How awesome is that? They can really move when they want to. So this guy is definitely a male. You can see he has a, a, a scent gland right in the middle of his chest. That's an easy way to identify a male from a female. Look at those claws, proper talons. You can see those big fuzzy ears, big nose. He has really poor eyesight. So he relies on um, hearing and smell mainly. And there he goes, using his sharp talons, sharp talon-like claws to climb up the tree in an instant. Look at that, hey mate. And there he goes. I feel like he's telling me to back off, so that's what I'll do. That's an experience I'll never forget. Yes, the koala. 
what really sucks is that koalas will probably be gone in the next 20 to 30 years because of diseases like chlamydia and uh, koala retrovirus and also um, negative environmental impacts such as you know habitat loss and they're so affected by these things because they, they, they rely so heavily on eucalyptus leaves they have such a specific niche such a specific diet that if anything goes wrong in an ecosystem it just screws it up for them you know these diseases are just wiping them out absolutely wiping them out and habitat loss if they don't have their trees they're just going to die it's as simple as that they need a certain amount of trees they need a certain amount of space and what it's just not that space left anymore It'd, it would be absolutely awesome to ha have these animals around when my kids are born and their kids after that so that they can experience them in the wild and have moments like I just had with that koala but if they're gone that's not going to happen and such an incredible and unique species will be lost forever Sadly, after reviewing the footage, I realised that this koala had a wet bum, which means he has chlamydia and will certainly die. This also puts every other koala within this conservation park at risk of contracting the disease, which if unchecked will wipe out a thriving population of 150 koalas. If you ever come across a sick or injured koala, or any animal for that matter, make sure you call a local wildlife rescue service like Wildcare, or wise. And with that, I continued on my search. No way, no way, no way. That's a bearded dragon. This right here, you probably can't see it very well, is an eastern bearded dragon, Pogona Barbata. And he should be in brumation, which is kind of like the reptile form of hibernation. Uh, it's not true hibernation, they can come out, and this is probably what uh, this guy's doing. He's gone out to get maybe a feed, a drink, something like that, and then he's going straight back into hibernate, uh, brumation. What an awesome find, a reptile in the middle of winter. I certainly wasn't expecting to stumble across this guy. All right, I reckon it's time we continue following this uh, game trail and try and find some evidence of an echidna. Check this out. So it's the middle of winter and this this is the second bearded dragon I found today. Cute little bearded dragon. You can see his incredible um, coloration. It helps him blend into any sort of stick on the ground. And this guy's only a baby. I've only ever seen a few babies, so I've been pretty lucky today. After four more hours of searching, I was left empty handed. So I decided to come back the next day. Boom. Fresh diggings. There's one there. There's one down there. This could be our echidna. Look how many there are. Look at this. This entire area is just covered in diggings. Look at this. Look at this. That's echidna poo. It's so fresh. We're so close to an echidna. That was the freshest scat I've ever seen in my entire life. I always knew there were foxes out here. But uh, here's the confirmation. You go looking for echidnas, you find dead foxes. <laughs> That's always how it works. After two more days of finding nothing but diggings, I decided to change up my echidna finding tactics. Every time I've been out in the bush looking for an echidna, it's been during the day or the afternoon. So I'm gonna try my luck going out at night and hopefully we find some cool animals and an echidna. So after encountering a few wallabies on the beach, <laughs> oh no, I headed off into the bush to search for our spiky little monotrium. Look at this, there's diggings all on here. They look pretty old, but man, it's not looking good for an echidna. I've barely found any animals. Those diggings weren't, weren't that fresh at all. So our chances of finding an echidna 
aren't the best at the moment. Then out of the gloom, I spotted something. No way, no way. That's an echidna. That's an echidna. After days of searching, we finally have an echidna. All the spines on this guy. Crazy. Super sharp. Yes, yes. An echidna. This is the short beaked echidna. And after five days of searching for this guy, I finally found him. And isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Now what he's doing right now is the most classic echidna defense mechanism. He's dug himself down into the dirt so that all of his soft, meaty parts are completely covered. And it's just left this wall of spines impenetrable to any predator, except for maybe a dingo or feral dog. And I mean, if, if I tried digging him out, it wouldn't work. He's, he's glued into that position. He's probably holding on to uh, roots, the roots of this tree. Now this guy is part of an ancient group of mammals called monotremes. And they share many similarities with reptiles. The most noticeable is the fact that they actually lay eggs. These guys can actually lift twice their body weight. They will rip open termite mounds, which are almost like concrete, and they can tear apart massive roots to get to ants. After leaving him alone for a few minutes, the little fella was up and moving and looking for some more ants to munch on. So what he's doing at the moment is he's um, digging himself a little burrow underneath this log. So he'll, once he finishes it, he'll be completely gone and out of sight. I wish I could have shown you his cute little face, but he's um, tucked away into his little hollow there and he's probably not going to come back out. I finally found him. The echidna hunt is finally over. It was one wicked adventure full of tons of wildlife and of course my favourite monotreme in the world, the unique, the absolutely incredible short beaked echidna. I can't wait to find another one of these guys in the wild. I reckon um, I'll end the episode here. So see ya in episode five. Hey mate. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing?